You'll have to tolerate my bad handwriting for a few more uh, videos as we go through more direct proofs in sentential logic. Still more examples, so let's go ahead and do some more. Um, okay, so P then Q, and um, let's say not Q um, or R. We'll do some straightforward ones, and um, let's see, we've got, let's see, we've got S, then not R, um, and let's say we'll have S. And what are we trying to prove here? We're trying to prove not P. So, just a simple one to get started with. How do we get this? So we're going to begin. We'll do our strategy here. We'll take a look. We'll look for our. Um, we we'll look for our conclusion. Here's our conclusion. How are we going to get our conclusion? Well, you notice that not p does not appear anywhere in here. Well, p does. And P is inside this conditional, which is trapped inside a conjunction. But, you know, that's no problem because we know now that um, second nature, we can just break this conjunction using simplification. And then we've got P then Q by itself. And if we need not P, how would we get not P from P then Q? Well, we could use modus tollens if we had not Q. Where is not Q? Well, not Q is over here, um, trapped inside this disjunction. How would we get not Q out of a disjunction? Well, we know that by the rule of disjunctive syllogism, if we find the negation of one of the disjuncts, we can conclude the other. So where is the negation of the other disjunct? Namely, where is the negation of R? Lo and behold, handily, it's right here. We've got not R, not R handily will allow us to use the rule of disjunctive syllogism on this disjunction. That'll give us not Q. Not Q will break out by modus ponens not P, and that would be it. So how do we get not R? Well, here we've got not R trapped inside a conditional right here. In the conditional, conveniently, We've got S, S would give us not R, not R would give us not Q, not Q would give us not P. Okay, so that should be a pretty easy one. So let's go ahead and do it. Little less conversation and a little more action as I do the proof. Okay, so how did I get the not R? I got that with two and three modus ponens. Line five, what am I up to here? Um, let's go not Q or R from line one by simplification. So then on line seven, what have we got here? We've got um, P then Q. I put the parentheses around out of force of habit from line one by simplification. Line eight, we've got not P. From line six and seven, modus tollens. 
Okay, so at this point, you might wonder, well, how did he do this or how did he do that? We'll call this example number five if you want to send me an email to ask me. But you shouldn't have to. Why? Well, because we have this nice accounting system where at each step, let's say you're worried about step eight. How did you get not P? Well, I got not P from six and seven by modus tollens. How did you get line 6? Well, I got 6 from 4 and 5 by disjunctive syllogism. How did you get line 3? Well, 3 is a premise. So every one of these steps is accounted for by this little justification here in our table. And there are no gaps. Everything's accounted for. Everything's legitimate. It's got its little license here. And that's that. But still, if you're stuck, you can send me an email. We'll call this example number five. Good, so let's start here. We've got this complicated looking thing and we're trying to get Q. We're trying to figure out how to get Q. Um, Q, we see Q right here. How would we get that Q? Well, Q is trapped inside a conditional. So we know that if we have not R, we can conclude Q. How do we get not R? Well, we look around, we see R is only here, um, but R is trapped inside this disjunction and then trapped inside this conditional, which is all trapped inside this conjunction. Conjunction is easy. Then the conditional, what do we do with conditional? Well, we've got modus ponens, but that's not going to help us. We've got modus tollens, that might help us. If we've got modus tollens, then we know that a, uh, a disjunction like R or S would end up coming out as, um, if we had by, you know, by modus tollens, it would come out negated, so we'd have not the case that R or S. And we know that by De Morgan, that would come out not R and not S, and we could conclude not R, so then we would be golden, because then we could get Q. Okay, so how would we do that? Well, we'd need not p to do the. We'd need not p to do the um, modus tollens on this part. Where would we get the not p? We'd need to break it out of this disjunction. But how would we do that? We'd need to do disjunctive syllogism. We'd need the negation of one of the disjuncts, not m. Lo and behold, we have it, and that's how we're gonna do it. So let's go ahead and do it then. All right, line one. Uh, let's go ahead and put down some premises. We'll be using them all, I guess. Try and be neater than I usually am. That's a premise. Line two, M or not P is a premise. Line three is also a premise. I don't need to be saying this to you at this point. Line four. I don't really need to write out simplification, but that's all right. Um, line five. What have we got? We've got not P by two and four disjunctive syllogism. Line six, uh, what, do we, what do we need here? We've got R or S then P from line one by simplification. Line seven, we've got not the case that R or S from lines five and six, modus tollens. Line eight, we apply to Morgan. Line nine, what have we got? What do we need again? I've forgotten. We need not R. Uh, from line eight, simplification. Uh, line 10, what do we need? We've got not R, we've got Q 
from line 9 and 3 modus ponens. Okay, there you go. There's your proof. Let's do another one. I guess that was too fast, sorry. So I'll leave this up for half a second. You can pause the pause the video, study that. We'll call this example number six. If you're having trouble with it, send us an email. Let's do another. Um, Okay, so let's take a look at this one. So we've got um, sort of a funny looking one here. Um, this is challenging. So here you see what you're trying to prove. You've got your S, we can see to get S we'd need this. Then we'd need this funny thing over here. We'd need not R and not Q. Not R and not Q, how would you get that? Well. There's no instance of not R and not Q, uh, but there are there is not R, and maybe there's a not Q too in here some way. Well, our old friend De Morgan might help us out there, um, and lo and behold, we've got some assistance down here. So I'm going to run this proof, and you can watch it. Oops. All right, let me start again. One, not the case that P and Q and not R premise. Next line, not the case that P and Q from line one by simplification. Three, not R from line one by simplification. Line four, not P or not Q from line two to Morgan. Line five, uh, what do I need again? Where are we? Not, not P, and that's a premise. Line six, not Q from lines four and five, disjunctive syllogism. Now, line seven, I've got not Q and I've got not R on a line by itself. By the rule of conjunction, I can go not R and not Q. That should be a parenthesis, even though it's totally unnecessary. Um, six and seven. Sorry, six and, sorry, three. So that's six and three conjunction. Line eight. Oh yeah, we need to introduce that premise so we can do this. Not R and not Q, then S is premise. And then line nine, S from seven and eight by modus ponens. That's it, game over. Okay. We can call this example number seven, I guess. Is that where we are now? Um, let's keep going. 